Grandmaster Vidit Gujarati strolls in and checks the name card. Is he playing with the white pieces? Yes, he is. He takes his chair and we all know what he's going to do next. He's going to close his eyes and do his ritual before the game, which is a secret to everyone. What is he thinking about? We do not know. But there he is. He's doing something that is definitely working for him. With it finishes his meditation ritual and then looks up. Magnus Carlsen has still not arrived at the board. So with it adjusts all his pieces. This is something that all chess players do. They want to get their pieces ready for the battlefield. That's going to happen. And there with it is playing at the World Rapid Championships in Samarkand, Uzbekistan on the top board against Magnus Carlsen. This is round number six and there we have Dana Raiznishe Ozola, a very important figure in FIDE and the chess world who's going to make the first move. Magnus has not yet arrived but you have her asking with it which move do you want to play and with it says d4. Magnus comes in, shakes hands and we are ready to get going. D4 has been played by the guest of honor and the game will begin. With it likes to open his games with d4. Magnus presses the clock. With it touches the pawn and there we go. D4, what is Magnus's reply going to be? As always, Magnus also adjusts all his pieces, puts them right in the center of each square and plays knight out to f6. c4 played here by Vidit and e6 by Magnus. g3, we are going into the Catalan territory. If Magnus does play d5, this will be Catalan. And you can see Magnus taking off his player card and trying to figure out what does he want to play. Does he want to play d5? Does he want to play something else? Because that will determine the flow of the game. He plays bishop b4 check. The Bogo Indian with it instantly responds by blocking the check with his bishop. Bishop takes and now an important thing to remember to take with the queen. Not with the knight because now the knight can come out on a much better square on c3. Black castles it out and with it has to continue his development. He plays his bishop to g2 and Magnus strikes in the center with d5. One of his ideas is to, of course, take here on d5 or on the c4 square, but knight f3 played by with it. If you take now, then knight a3 taking back the pawn is a very good position for white. So I don't think Magnus would take, but he plays c6. And his point is that if you castle now, he wants to take. And then after knight e5, trying to win this pawn, there's b5. So you know you get this entire setup. But of course, you should remember that there's this very nice pawn sacrifice in such positions where white has compensation. So with it could have castled, but he plays b3 and he makes sure that his c4 pawn cannot be taken. b6 played by Magnus. Maybe he wants the bishop here. Maybe he wants the bishop on a6. With it quickly castles it out. And of course, if you play bishop a6 now, then I can simply defend with my rook. So Magnus has to decide, does he want to play bishop a6? Does he want to play bishop b7? Does he want to go knight d7? These are the few options here. He goes bishop b7. Playing quite conservatively with the black pieces, but sometimes that's how it goes. You just want to play normal, solid chess and let your opponent take risks. Knight goes to c3 and Magnus finishes his development of minor pieces by putting his knight on the d7 square. What is with it going to do next? He has to decide where his rooks go. The most natural squares are rook c1 and rook d1 and that's why he begins with rook f to d1 putting the rook on the central square. You might wonder what's the rook doing there but actually it stops black from his natural breakthrough c5 once you have the rook here on the d5. So the queen moves out to e7 which is the most logical square for the queen while with it brings his rook into the game. I love the coordination of white's pieces. All of them are nicely developed 
and Magnus also brings his rook to d8. This is the phase of the game where all the pieces have been developed. Now Vidit has to come up with a plan, an idea about what he wants to do next, which is never really easy in chess. But I like with its next move, queen f4, he's angling at the c7 square. He's also looking at the e4 break, if it is possible somehow. But Magnus goes bishop a6 and he attacks with its c4 pawn. Well, one thing that Vidit can definitely do is ignore that pawn, but he decides to actually take it. Take on d5. Very interesting. Because now Magnus can take with the knight or with the pawn. He decides to take back with the pawn, opening up the c file for his rook. Also notice how the bishop keeps putting pressure on the e2 pawn. It seems like black has equalized out of the opening. But you can see with it, he wants to play something aggressive. He goes g4. What a move. g4, g5, h4, h5, knight e5. Is he trying to launch some kind of an attack on Magnus's position? Well, Magnus is least bothered by it. He just brings his rook here. Of course, g4 is a slightly dangerous move for both sides. For with it, because now with g5, He's not only weakened f4, h4, h5, all these squares, but he's also somehow weakening his own king a bit. Magnus puts his knight on h5 and attacks with its queen on f4. He must move his queen away either here on e3 or on d2. We'll see where with it moves his queen. He goes queen to d2. One of the things that has happened in this position is that Vidit now has more space on the king side. Magnus goes g6 and his idea is to reroute his knight to f5. That's what he wants to do. How, did, how can Vidit continue now? He can double his rooks on the c5. But he goes h4. He connects his pawns. He defends the pawn on g5. And maybe in future the bishop can pop out here. And that could be useful. Magnus goes in with the queen. That's a very logical and good idea here. To go queen b4. Because with that he has pressure on the queen side. With it simply puts his pawn on e3. Controlling the f4 square. And also defending his d4 pawn. The knight goes back. Now, one of the things I'm a bit worried about White's position is that Black Knight comes here and constantly keeps attacking the h4 pawn. And with it, immediately addresses it by putting his bishop here and saying, if a knight comes in, I'm going to chop it off. Well, what is Magnus Carlsen's next plan? Rook c7. This is such a nice strategic game. There's an open file. He wants to double it. Also, at some point, you know, you don't want your rook to be in the line of the bishop. So nice move. With it goes queen to b2 just so that he comes out of this pin here and can now move the knight on c3. Queen b2 is a nice little move. Rook c8 played putting pressure on the c file by black and white plays his knight back to b1. Well with it wants to trade off pieces. Knight goes back to e8. I love how Magnus takes care of his pieces. He's looking at the knight coming to d6, e4, f5. You know, the knight will be very well placed here. So rooks are traded. One pair of rooks traded. Black pieces definitely look more harmonious for the time being. But with it says, I'm going to get rid of them one by one and place his rook to c1. Magnus can of course take, but he goes queen d6. And he tells with it that if you take my rook then my queen will take it back and i have the control of the c file you can play queen c3 trade the queens and go into an equal end game but we'll see if with it does that no he goes queen a3 what a move by with it gujarati is attacking the a6 bishop and also queen e7 threatened it seems like he is in an ambitious mood here that's a very very cool move played here by with it and Magnus goes bishop e2. Can with it go queen e7 here? Well, maybe not because bishop takes f3 would anyway happen. He goes knight d2 and Magnus quickly brings his knight out. Bishop is brought back.
to be traded. Vidit says, I want to get rid of these pieces. Bishop takes bishop and king takes seems like the most normal way to play. King takes f1. The position is round about even. However, you will notice that Magnus will start his magic now. First knight f5. Magnus says to Vidit, everything's equal. But I have the c file. My knight is attacking your pawn. I have something to play with. Let me get a sip of water in so that I can start grinding this position. The time is around equal. Both players have four and a half minutes on the clock. The king comes up to e2. With it, doesn't seem perturbed by any sense. You know, h5. What a move. Fixing these pawns here. H4 pawn is now a permanent weakness unless with it decides to take or pass on here. Very, very important moment in the game. Actually, for Vidit, if he takes here on GH6, that seems logical. Otherwise, the H4 pawn is weak. He takes it and he's hoping that Magnus takes here so that he can enter the position with his queen because the knight right now controls this square. But Magnus goes knight F6. I love this move because firstly, he clears the queen's defense to the E7 pawn. He defends the H5 square so that white cannot sacrifice the pawn there with it now plays queen to a4 but these squares already are covered quite well and knight takes pawn has happened so black now actually has something to play with in chess there's a concept called pawn islands white now has three pawn islands which is one here second here and third here while Black only has two, which means white has to take more care of his pawns. But with it says, it's fine. You know, I have active knights. Also, you mustn't forget that if black had taken here, with it would have taken the pawn on a7. So Magnus defends it. And now the pawn on h4 is hanging. So with it quickly brings his knight there to defend. The knight jumps into the e4 square, now threatening a check to win the a2 pawn. So with it, down to two minutes on the clock, this is how Magnus puts pressure on his opponents in the end games. He makes his moves quickly. He makes logical moves. He understands the harmony of pieces beautifully. But for the time being, with it has everything under control. So the king comes into e7, just improving the king's possibilities the king cannot go anywhere further because the f7 pawn would be hanging you can't kick the knight because then the g6 pawn hangs so with it waits with king e1 and he tells magnus that look i feel that everything is safe here you can't make progress magnus goes knight g8 where, uh, knight f6 where is he going with his knight is the million dollar question knight g5 the knight goes back to d6 because he had to defend the f7 pawn. And now king comes up. Knight d7 offering a trade of knights. You can take here. But then the king might want to come here and play b5. So with it gives a check. The king goes back to e8. What has really worked in Magnus's favor is with its time. He's down to 42 seconds. While Magnus has 3 minutes 30 seconds. With it brings his king up. Maybe with it wants to play f3 and e4. That way he would be expanding. Knight comes to f5, attacking the h4 pawn. With it brings back his knight to defend it. And where is Magnus's next move? What is it going to be? Well, he brings his knight to f6. I love how he swivels the knight there. Looking here and here. King goes back to e2 and knight g8. Knight goes back to g8 because he wants to trade off a pair of knights with knight e7. Well, the board is Magnus's playground there and his knights are creating a nightmare for Vidit who is down to 20 seconds. You see, the pressure occurs on every side of the chessboard with Magnus playing on the queen side, king side, on the clock, everywhere. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes the pawn and now Vidit has managed to exchange more pieces. But if you see, he now has a weakness on a4 as well as h4. Knight goes to e7, just improving his position very slightly. As we all know, Magnus never ignores any of his pieces and he is improved that. Knight goes back to d3 for Vidit and the knight may want to go to e5 square. Knight c8, love this move. The knight is coming to d6, 
to e4 to c4 and this knight will have great possibilities knight comes in the center magnus moves his knight with it again down to 20 seconds magnus still up on time three minutes knight goes to c6 the knight is actually threatening nothing and with it can maybe wants to place knight somewhere f6 taking control of the square the knights now can't move there time wise with it down to last 10 seconds Plays his knight back to b4. Magnus moves in. Now the threat is a check to win the pawn. How did Magnus manage to put so much pressure on his opponent? Wow. Brilliant play there. Maybe with it can... Oh, he goes knight a2. Stopping it. Stopping knight c3. And now Magnus bringing his king in. Maybe he's threatening here, here, here. He wants to come to a5. A very good way to continue is then to... Simply move the king away and if king c6 knight b4 you give up your pawn there and then play knight d3 coming to f4. That's how you gain counterplay but with it blunders here with knight d2. With it under pressure he was 2 seconds on the clock. His position was difficult. His knight couldn't move from f3 nor from a2 but now he's played knight d2. And actually Magnus Carlsen with 3 minutes on the clock. Sees his opportunity. He sees that the h4 pawn is hanging. He takes on d2. King takes d2 and chops off the pawn. He's pawn up in this knight end game. And guys, you know that knight end games are like pawn end games. If you are one pawn up, it is a winning position. Knight goes back to f5. With it, plays his knight to d3. He is threatening to come here to attack the pawns on e6 and g6. But Magnus nips it right in the bud with g5. What an endgame player Magnus Carlsen is. King c3. Maybe with it wants to create play here with his king. But the black king is ready. Already to come to c6. He plays it. King goes to c6. With it waits now with king d2. Is this win still difficult to convert for Magnus? Or is it easy? He brings his knight back to d6. He's looking at the e4 square. He's looking at the c4 square. Later, he can start pushing his pawns. With it, plays his pawn up to f3, stopping knight from coming to e4. And Magnus plays king b7. Cool little move. The idea is to come here to a5 and attack the pawn on a4. Knight f2 played and king a6 by Magnus. e4 played right in the center of the board. And I think Magnus will just take, yes, pawn takes. And now he has the G passer. He goes A5. He wants to win the A pawn. Then he will have the B passer, then the G passer. Slowly and steadily, the game is going out of control and out of hand for visit. He loses his second pawn. And Magnus Carlsen is in the driver's seat totally. Pawn to E5. Takes, pawn takes. And now Magnus... Cal has to calculate. Look at how he's made perfect use of his time. That's so beautiful to see. Magnus still has 2 minutes 10 seconds on the clock. He attacks the pawn on e5. With it defends it. Maybe it's the right time now to start pushing your b pawn down the board because everything seems to be under control. But Magnus plays his knight back to e8 d8 maybe he wants to give a check here that could be a possibility and also you will see that b5 would have allowed maybe the king to come in so that's the reason why he did not go for it straight away g4 played the pawn moves one step closer but with it says that pawn is weak i'm going to go and capture it magnus says be my guest take that pawn but my b pawn will start to queen with it goes in king f4 Magnus cannot defend that pawn anymore, but he pushes his pawn and adjusts his pieces. B4 has been played with it, chops off the pawn. He's now just one pawn down. Can he manage to hold this position? Well, Magnus says not really. B3 played. The B pawn is going to net the knight's life. And then Black still has another pawn to win the game. King G5 played. And now King wants to come into f6 and e7. So first goes knight c6. And the important point here is that if you go king f6, I have knight to d4 defending the pawn. That's why with it plays a check here. And now king b4, yes. If you take on e6, 
there is b2 b1 queen and if you take on b3 i just take with my king the game is over with it down to his last few seconds and he gives his hand in resignation magnus carlsen wins it what a guy let's hear the conversation of both these players